radiation okay so we need to really radiate okay so this is radiation 1 for camera team this is radiation 1 so now only i guess i have modulated to you to your needs okay so we all know that for radiation we don't need any medium see this is quite different from what we have been thinking for conduction and convection and this radiation occurs instantaneously why do i say instantaneously why do i say instantaneously it travels at the speed of light radiation is occurring because of electromagnetic waves and these electromagnetic waves are moving at the speed of light only that speed gets little bit stunted provided my medium starts participating so that stunting is dependent on the refractive index of my material in fact all properties i realized only off late all properties emissivity absorptivity refractivity transmissivity every one is dependent on refractive index dependent on refractive index if i have to come from electromagnetic wave theory and i will just simply touch and go i will not be uh, trying to model anything and show you that okay emissivity of this surface is a function of refractive index i i can i am not intending to do that because i have not done that so far so maybe before workshop i can demonstrate one okay i was just seeing modest so i saw that it's all about refractive indices only so thermal radiation the point is thermal radiation doesn't require any matter quite unlike conduction and convection so why do we study radiation for that matter what are all the examples you give for studying conduction i guess we can give plenty of examples convection i guess we can give why do we study radiation what are the typical examples you quote in the class for studying radiation solar okay let's throw for a minute solar out of our minds okay furnaces what what is the issue in furnaces what are the issues in furnaces when i say furnace what are the issues in furnaces we are looking for not heat loss how do i create a furnace how do I, why do I need a furnace first of all? If you see typically, yes? Right, that is one of the examples, but furnaces we said, I mean furnaces yet. So, in furnace, why do I use furnaces? For heat treatment of all our automobile parts, almost all our equipment, whatever is there, it undergoes heat treatment. So, for heat treatment, my furnace I either has to be electrical heater or oil fired furnaces i think generally they are all oil fired furnaces not electrical heaters because everywhere you cannot get electrical electricity is always a problem now the question is a furnace is typically a room of this size it can be much bigger than this actually we have uh, i have seen at least furnaces just across ghatkopur that is just uh, 10 15 minutes from here furnace is much double than this where they keep almost you can drive in a car and keep it inside i mean it's that big so the point is they keep all sorts of materials for fixed amount of time but then before they keep you have to reach the steady state each of these walls have to be maintained either constant heat flux or constant wall temperature whichever it takes typically if it is a electrically heated it will be constant heat flux so you have to have you how to have an idea how much power you need to supply to each wall and also someone was saying losses how much losses are going to go away if it is electrical heater electrical heater is reasonably easy to design but electrical furnace is easy to design but if it is oil fired furnace let us say it depends now which oil typically we use diesel because it is cheaper diesel fired furnace but then diesel is not a such a good fuel to burn we all know diesel diesel is not such a good fuel to burn so when you burn diesel now when you burn diesel there are burners you have to put burners at various locations now i need to optimize the location of the burner burner design and burner design is specific to the fuel i use if it is a gaseous fuel if it is methane or propane or butane it is one design 
if it is as I said oil fired furnace, I have to have an injector mechanism and then I have to burn it. So, there are several issues when I am designing a furnace and now the question is when I said burner, why I took the example of burner? Because the heat transfer mode from my burner flame to my furnace wall is what? Is what? Radiation alone? In a gas stove, every day we cook, our mothers and wives and we also cook. What is the mode of the heat transfer between the flame and the plate or the vessel? Convection, very true, very true. Why convection? Why radiation is not there? What is that? Image. No, it is not like that. Yeah, no, it is not that way, it is not that way, it is not that way. What is the color of the flame? I always quote this because I have learnt it in a very hard way. So, huh? Saket is always already laughing because maybe he has heard it n number of times, but that is ok. So, blue flame, if it is blue, what is the emissivity of a blue flame? Okay. I will ask you like this. If I put my hand near the blue flame, that is my gas stove, do I feel any heat? Do, do I sweat when I stand in front of gas stove and cook? That is my question. No. You do not sweat as much as you sweat when you cook in front of wooden cooking stove. Why? What is the color of the flame in wood, wood burning cooking stove? Yellowish red yellowish red. Why? Because the emissivity of the flame of yellowish or slash reddish flame is very high. How high it depends on the character of the fuel which you burn. Character of the fuel which you burn, size of the fuel container whatever you have. So, why? Why it is emitting? Who is emitting there in the yellowish flame? Yellowish is complete combustion or bluish is complete combustion? Bluish is complete combustion. So, there is no soot, there is no black particles. When you burn, now our steel, steel utensils do not become blackish when, when my flame, when it is gas stove. But when my grandmother used to cook on wooden stoves, wooden based mud stoves, mud cooking stoves, all my utensils used to be steel utensils used to be blackish. She used to do only on mud based pots, earthen pots she used to use, because they were ge getting blackish. The point is they become the yellowish flame is incomplete combustion. Because it is incomplete combustion, you have soot particles. Those soot particles are emitting that reddish. Okay. So, that, that is why it is reddish, that is why it is reddish slash yellowish. Okay. So, the point was what I was trying to say is that the color also suggests the emissivity and what was I trying to say? Huh. What was I trying to say is that in a furnace it depends, if I am using an yellowish flame, if it is a diesel based burning, it is not going to be blue, it is going to be yellowish because there is soot. But if I am using methane based burner, then it is bluish flame. Ha. What was I trying to say is, what is the mode of the heat transfer? The mode of the heat transfer in a gas stove between the flame and the plate is purely convection. Emissivity of my flame may be is of the order of 0 0.03 of my bluish flame. So, you can conveniently neglect radiation. As a, as a for a classroom, if you are doing research and doing nitpicking, you will have to worry about that portion also. But otherwise, it is purely mode of heat transfer is convection. But if it were to be yellowish flame, that is if I am using wooden cooking stove or in a furnace where it is diesel based uh, burner, then it is going to be yellowish and there, there is a combination of 
convection and radiation. Okay. So, we have to be very careful, I mean the point is identifying the mode of heat transfer itself becomes tricky in case of radiation and most of the times as I keep saying in the class, we study conduction, convection, radiation separately for the sake of simplicity only, because we cannot take all together in one go, but in real life there is nothing like pure conduction, pure convection, pure radiation, some component will be there everywhere. How much is dependent on case by case basis, but otherwise you have, you have everything everywhere. Okay. So, that is see I was just trying to give the examples of course, solar radiation I do not want to touch because you are all very good at it. So, solar radiation I am sure many of you are working on solar radiation also. So, I will not touch upon that. So, now yes. No, no, there also temperatures are quite high in flame also, uh, in uh, blue flame also temperatures are as high as around uh, 700 to 750 degree Celsius. But we are not able to feel the heat as. Ha, why? Because it is not emitting, no. It has to emit, no, to radiate. When can I, when can, my temperature is high. See, le, uh, let me explain this in a very simple fashion. Emissive power is equal to E into, sorry sigma epsilon t to the power of 4. Yes. Any body which emits sigma epsilon t to the power of 4. Your point is my t is going to be 750 degree Celsius. How come you are saying there is no radiation? Is that right? That is what you are saying. So, my point is epsilon is 0 0.03. So, its component will be less. very less. My heat transfer coefficient on the other hand in a gas stove in a heat transfer will be very high. It will be of the orders of thousands, it will be of the order of thousands. So, convective component will be quite high compared to radiation. Who is pulling it down because of my epsilon? Because of my epsilon of whom? Epsilon of my flame. I hope I have reached you. But the furnace also we have the same problem, soot formation. If it is, if my flame is yellowish. If my flame is yellowish only, I get this suit. Then there is emissivity. If there is suit means what? There is Unburned. emissivity. Then radiation becomes important. Is that okay? Is that convincing? Okay. Yes. Blue flame is just like a hot gas. Very well put. Very well put. You can take it. That is why I am saying it is convection. It is like a hot gas coming and heating my cold plate. That is very well put, very well put. Yeah. So, now coming back, so radiation does not require any medium. So, we always quote this example, this also I have copy pasted from Shangal. So, if I sit in front of fire, if I sit in front of fire, although my the temperature of the fluid between me and the fire is less, the radiation takes place and I feel the heat. But at the same time in radiation, I need to be worried whether I am facing the fire front or sidewards. Okay. So, because you know everything, so I can go farther and come back. That that is what is that concept. How do I factor in this concept? Whether I am facing the fire or facing sidewards, how do I factor in this concept? V factor. That is V factor. How much I am weaving? How much the source and sinker in which way they are weaving each other? That is the V factor. Okay. View factor sidewards it should be lower than the view factor otherwise. Okay. Okay. So now let if I take this is just a thought experiment which suggests that I have taken a body whose temperature is quite high compared to the surrounding temperature and my enclosure is at a surrounding temperature and there is no medium inside and eventually this body attains the temperature of surrounding, this demo demonstrates that there is a heat transfer even in the absence of medium. So, this is just to suggest, suggest that there is radiation even in the absence of medium. Okay. So, now as I said little earlier, the radiation takes place through electromagnetic waves and electromagnetic radiation energy is passing through 
waves and this wave is passing at a speed of light and in, in vacuum, if it is in vacuum, it is going to velocity of the speed of light is sorry, speed of light in vacuum is 2.998 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second and n, if it is a any given medium, c is going to get decreased by as much as the refractive index. So, c naught by n, typical refractive indices are for air and most of the gases, it is near 1. For glass, it is we have done this in plus 2. I do not I don't know whether you recollect, we have measured in plus 2 refractive index of water as 1.33. I remember adjusting the angle to get 1.33. So, that is how I never used to get the alignment of prisms properly. I was a hopeless experimentalist at that time. So, but my teacher used to insist that I need to get 1.33. So, I had to do that. So, glass 1.5. So, now what does this say? The main observation is that the lambda and c, you can imagine a wave, you can imagine a wave and it is going to have a wavelength. What is a wavelength? Between two peaks or two troughs is the wavelength. Okay? And c, we can all that is I said speed. So, this wavelength and the speed with which the light or the electro not the light electromagnetic wave or okay, light passes through that medium, they are dependent on the source sorry, they are dependent on the medium through which my electromagnetic wave passes. But the frequency, frequency is dependent on the source, frequency is dependent on the source. This we have studied in physics. So, now frequency to wavelength is given by lambda equal to c by nu okay? and then c this is history we have studied there also, I mean in plus 2 also, we handle, I mean now only I realize while reading thermal radiation, optics, if I can understand optics well, I can understand thermal radiation. Why? Because electromagnetic wave is moving like a light wave and we have studied when in plus 2 our teachers were teaching us light wave can be quantified or can be understood as a wave and also as packets of energy that those packets of energy are called as photons and we married or, or we applied these two any of these two wherever it was convenient to explain any of the experimental observation. This is what we recoll recollect from our plus two that is what we are applying here also. Okay. So, each of the photon with the frequency is moving with the frequency nu is going to have an energy equal to h nu that is what Planck gave us E equal to h nu, nu is equal to c by lambda, h c by lambda and the Planck's constant is 6.625 into 10 to the power of minus 34 joule second. So, now energy of the photon as you can see that it is inversely proportional to wavelength that means shorter wavelength waves we will get to know this little later. The gamma rays and x rays are highly destructive because they are going to be uh, carrying larger energy. But this, this figure I like always because this is what gives us the feel of various waves. I do not know from where I downloaded, this was I had downloaded 10 years back when I was in IIT Gohati. So, but I still love this because I cannot get any figure better than this. Why I love this figure? Because the first, what is that first line representing? Wavelength. The second is giving the size of a wavelength with a picture which gives us the size which gives me the feel of a size. For example, now you see, now let us for a minute let us go to the next line, common name of the wave. These are radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible, ultraviolet. Actually, our domain is going to be only infrared, visible and a little bit of ultraviolet, soft x-rays, hard x-rays, gamma rays. Now, how do I feel this wavelength? How do I feel this wavelength? What is the wavelength of infrared or microwaves? Let us come from radio waves. What is the wavelength of a radio wave? It is as big as a football ground. Okay? So, so now you can feel. Now, same there are radio waves as big as football ground and also a house, okay? typical house or this room. Now, let us come to microwaves. They can be from a tennis ball or a baseball to a simple full stop what I put on my paper. Okay. Now, 
my infrared waves start from full stop size to smaller than that as small as amoeba that is I have to see through a microscope. Okay. See I think this is very important figure in the sense that I can reach my student not in an abstract way, but with a physical feel. Otherwise wave is there, wave wavelength it is having a high wavelength, low wavelength, I am not reaching him. This is the only way I am, see always we say no, whenever we use another thing I want to tell, whenever we use, because we did not intend to solve a problem, whenever we say 3 meters, what is 3 meter means we have to give the physical picture of to the student. 3 meters means how many, because I always think like this, this I have learned from readers digest. That is one foot, how many foot feet is usually a building, one story building, 10 to 12 feet. Okay, let us take it as 10 because calculation becomes easy. So, 3 meters means 3 by 0.3, 3 into 3 roughly 9 feet. So, one story building. So, whenever any unit is put across, I should be, I should be giving him the physical picture, physical picture we have to give, that is what is happening in this. See, when now when I imagine infrared wave or a electromagnetic wave which is contributing thermal radiation, it is its wavelength is going to be smaller than full stop and as big as what I can see in a microscope. Okay. So, that is what, th then, then I, I need micrometer, then, then comes the picture, then comes the, that means it is smaller than my hair size. I keep saying hair size always, why? Because hair I can see 75 micrometer. Okay. So, it is smaller than that, it is smaller than that. So, so, this picture if you put people can or students can, we can carry them along with us if I put this. Now, of course, so the where are the sources that you can see there are various sources of each of these waves, I am not going to spend time on that. Okay. So, that is about the electromagnetic, what is this? This is called electromagnetic spectrum. So, now we will realize that in the next transparency, I will go to the next one and then come back. This portion of ultraviolet, a portion of infrared is the one which is which is going to contribute the thermal radiation. What does that mean? When I say these are the ones which are going to contribute the thermal radiation, by virtue of temperature they are emitting energy. Okay. So, that is that is what we mean by thermal radiation. Of course, we will appreciate this when we plot the energy versus emissive power versus wavelength for different temperatures, you will see that only within this wavelength band there is emissive power contributed because of because of temperature, because of temperature. Okay. So, that is the that is why we say thermal radiation. Okay. There are a lot of blah blah, I think this we have studied in plus 2 violet, what is the wavelength band, Vip we have all studied, so I do not have to worry about that. So, that is about the electromagnetic spectrum. Question which was asked to my aunt when she went for a school teacher's interview physics. Why is traffic light red to indicate stop? Why not green? So, yeah. does that is, is it a picture of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is very nice, so very good example. Fact, I, I, this she told me when I was in about 8th or 9th standard, it was just stuck in my head, you know, it is such a beautiful question. In fact, I learnt it very recently, Professor Anil Kumar from chemistry department, we have an enthuse program to enthuse all the PhD guys and M Tech guys, he quoted this example, why red is red and green is green for signal, signal why is it green? because it is naturally there. So, everywhere in the nature the most common color is green. So, so green is there that is the reason it is green and red very rightly said it has a longer wavelength. So, for longer la, larger because I need to know that better I stop myself before I reach that. So, that is the see everything what he was trying to say is everything is there we need to observe. observe. Only when we observe, we will ask the question, why? If I do not even observe, I will not even ask the question, why does not come into picture. Okay. So, anyway, I, we got digressed, but that is that is a beautiful example. Okay.
So, now, now radiation is a volumetric phenomenon, but we assume that it is a surface phenomena and we go ahead with that. So, I do not want to spend time on that and then the thermal radiation is going to be having, it is it's going to be a function of, it is going to have direction and it is also going to be dependent on the wavelength. We have now seen each wavelength, we have differing wavelengths within our band that is within that, what is that? Ultraviolet, infrared, visible, all each one is having a different wavelength. So, my radiation has to be dependent, the emitted radiation has to be not only dependent on the direction, but also dependent on the wavelength. For wavelength, we use the word spectral distribution and for direction, of course, directionality. Okay. So, we have to worry about spectral, not only spectral, but also directional distribution. So, that is about, so I think I will leave it to now Professor Arun, he is the expert in this. So, he will do justice better than me, that is our perception. Till now, we have been here relegating spherical coordinates to students for assignment. So, I think it might be, now I feel that it is a good idea perhaps even to derive spherical coordinates, the heat diffusion equation. Now, I feel, now I feel actually. Cartesian coordinates, the moment I derive Cartesian coordinates, cylindrical let us give it as assignment. This is my plan for main workshop. I intend to solve it for spherical coordinates in the, because by that time r theta phi is now little familiar. Registered. So, I, I would request even when you are teaching, uh, instead of relegating spherical coordinates for assignment, the moment Cartesian, Cartesian I cannot do because if I take spherical in the first instance it's itself, it becomes little complicated. So, first let us do Cartesian, but on a fast track let us do spherical. So, I would think that doing spherical has a merit in itself, because when we come for radiation it becomes that much easier.